golf has always been a game for the best of the best, which just means it always triggers the best kind of controversy. From heated feuds to the most minor of rule breaks, everything can result in crazy backlash. And no matter who you are, the rules of golf are the same. Or are they? Maybe not if you're Tiger Woods because Mr. T really engineered his way out of one of the biggest controversies in pro golf. Kinda cool how the most popular golf player was involved in the sport's biggest controversy, huh? But that's besides the point. See, there was a time when Tiger skirted a bit too close to a rule break. In fact, according to Jim McCabe from Golf Week, he actually did. It was back at the 1999 Phoenix Open when there was a huge boulder blocking his path. Sounds almost like a scene from Looney Tunes, right? What happened next is even better. A huge crowd of spectators came onto the green and used their combined strength to roll it away and let him take his shot. That's gotta be against the rules, right? Turns out there's nothing in the rule book for what to do when the audience works together to push away a huge chunk of rock, Sisyphus style. And Tiger managed to get out of the woods pretty quick all thanks to his insanely dedicated fans. Unlike Julie Inkster at the 2010 Safeway Classic. No, turns out the fans watching that particular tourney were rooting for her to fail. Those are some dedicated haters. Apparently, a fan watching on TV, not even live, noticed her using the donut mechanism, which directly violated Rule 14-3 in the US Golf Association Handbook. Guess she went for the wrong hole in one. Somebody should have told her do not use that mechanism. This little mistake ended up getting the 50-year-old golfer disqualified from the tournament. That's gotta classify as some sort of elder abuse. And she was really close to winning too. If Julie had won, it would have made her the oldest person ever to win in the history of the LPGA Tour. Too bad the rules were working against her. Unlike in Arnold Palmer's case, it was his first ever win back in 1958. Sheesh. The controversy was brought back into the public eye by Bob Herring from ESPN back in 2008. And a good thing too, because it definitely wouldn't fly today. Palmer's tee shot on the par 3 12th hole had gone over the back of the green and he demanded relief. Too bad for him the official on the scene, Arthur Lacey, didn't agree. He made Palmer take his next shot from where the ball fell, and he ended up missing. After that, the golfer declared a second ball and went up and down for par, taking a drop from where his OG tee shot had gotten plugged. When officials came back to revisit the ruling at the 15th hole, it went in Palmer's favor, and that ended up being enough to let him win the game by a single stroke. Lacey must have been fuming. Although highly controversial, the drama on this particular occasion was very one-sided. Not a real golfing feud like Seve vs. Zinger. They had one of the biggest controversies in pro golfing history. The two have a history of accusing each other of cheating and treating the other as their rivals. Everything came to a head at the 1989 Belfry Ryder Cup. Tensions were high the whole match, and Azinger sparked things further by disrupting his rival's request to replace a ball that had been scuffed. The spark set to a flame when his dispute was successful. Guess he zinged his opponent pretty good. That wasn't the end though. Seve got his own back by accusing the other of not dropping from a water hazard properly. Not good enough though, considering Azinger won that particular match. In the end, Seve still had the last laugh, winning the Ryder Cup along with his team. These pro golfers really know how to bring it. The Seve Ballesteros and Paul Azinger rivalry is one for the ages and well documented by the media. Their 1991 race for the cup was immortalized with the nickname of the War on the Shore Cup. Yeah, but I mean, the rule says, yeah, but what the rule says is the players cannot switch balls. So they, they, the only time we did it was on the second hole, on the seventh hole, because I recall that. I agree with you 100%. Well, yeah, it was war for sure. And it all started with those cheating accusations being lobbied. Speaking of cheating, here's somebody else that got embroiled in a cheating incident by accident, Dustin Johnson. Now you might be asking, how does somebody cheat by accident? 
In golf, with its endlessly complicated and roundabout rules, it's not only possible, but it's also even likely. And that's exactly what befell Dustin Johnson at the 2010 PGA Championship. Thanks to the huge crowd blocking his view and the number of sand traps littering the golf course, he couldn't tell he was in a bunker. And he ended up grounding his club during his second shot, which is against the rules. The audience shouldn't have been only feet away during a game where people swing clubs, but hey, what can you do? Dustin Johnson is in the running for one of the best American golfers under 30 in the biz right now, which is why it was such a bummer to lose on the technicality. But hey, his six future wins on the PGA Tour probably did a pretty good job of consoling him. But if that ain't enough, here's something else that can console him. He's not the only one. 60s golfing star Roberto Di Vincenzo somehow managed to lose thanks to an accidental rule break too. He was just coming off a win in the 1967 Open Championship and was a huge deal. He was looking to land his second major in only three tries, only to end up in trouble with the ever-complex rules of golfing. His playing partner, Tommy Aaron, accidentally wrote down a par 4 on the 17th hole on Vincenzo's scorecard, when the guy had actually scored a birdie. And nobody even noticed the mistake until after the cards had already been submitted. Guess that particular win flew the coop. The title ended up going to the famous Bobby Golby by a single stroke. He sure fulfilled his goals all right. Di Vincenzo famously said regarding this incident, what a stupid I am, but probably not quite as stupid as the PGA Tour must have felt during this early 2000s controversy, when they banned Casey Martin from using a golf cart in competitive play. The guy had a serious need for the cart, considering he was born with Klippel Trenani Weber syndrome in his leg. He was already playing with a disability and the tour wouldn't let him use the cart to get around the course. He had to overcome a lot to play so well with a medical condition. Martin had worked hard to have a successful college career at Stanford Uni. He even played on a team with Tiger Woods for a while. It wouldn't be fair to be at a disadvantage competitively, so he ended up suing them. That wasn't so controversial. The real controversy was that the case managed to get all the way to the Supreme Court in 2001. Martin sued them under the Americans with Disabilities Act and won the case with a verdict of 7 to 2. Apparently, the majority opinion of the Supreme Court jury was that his use of a golf cart wouldn't have fundamentally altered the nature of golf. This was one of the biggest controversies in the history of golf, just because of how large scale it was. So that's everything we have on the top 7 worst controversies in the history of pro golf and how all these golfers dealt with the drama. See you in the next vid.